Hello, Michael here from Small Robot Studio with another Render Man tutorial. Today we're going to be having a look at how to render out separate AOVs using Render Man and Maya. And then we're going to composite them back together in Nuke. So you can see I've got a little scene open here. And what I'm going to do is open up my render settings. And we're just going to go to the Render Man tab and then to the AOV tab. So to start with, you should have a beauty um, AOV in here by default, which is your CI, um, and then also your alpha. We can actually extract a bunch of different layers from this beauty by default. Um, if your beauty layer doesn't say beauty there, it says something else. What I want you to do is hit the minus button there, and it's just going to reset it. Sometimes it um, loads a bit funny. It might load it with some um, OSL uh, coding rather than just the nice name. On the left here, we have all our different passes and we're going to transfer them into a new uh, render pass here. So we're just going to hit the plus button and we're going to create sort of like a little folder for them. So this is going to be one output and it's going to, um, it's going to have all of the different um, AOVs built into it. So we're just going to call this one passes and we're going to put four different passes in it. So we're going to grab the director fuse direct specular, I'm just holding down control and selecting these, indirect diffuse and indirect specular. So with those selected and then the passes uh, lobe selected on the right hand side, we're going to select this button here which will drop them in. Now I'll just do a quick IPR so you can see what this looks like. Okay so we've got our basic render here, I haven't enabled denoising yet so I can't actually denoise it. Um, but as you can see here, it doesn't actually have anything but the, um, actually that's come out as a diffuse, which is, uh, oh, that's because I've added that diffuse pass in. Um, so we've got the beauty and we've got the alpha and then we've got that diffuse pass. So what I'm going to do now is create a separate pass for the, uh, dome light, which I also have in here, which you can see by this image that's been projected onto a, uh, environment light, sorry. So we're going to call this one, well actually because we're just adding one, we'll just scroll down we'll grab emissive without anything here selected and we'll just hit that and it will ask if we want to create a new node, we do and it's just going to call it emissive and emissive one. And the reason we're doing this is because we want to denoise these and the emissive, uh, any, any emissive te uh, material won't denoise with these passes. Um, and you may find that with other passes that you, you do do, um, but you will just have to test those. I'm just going to go through the basics here. I can't cover every conceivable uh, combination of AOVs, unfortunately. So generally these are designed for uh, your purposes. So we are going to select the passes lobe and then we're going to click denoise. And we're going to do the same for the emissive lobe, denoise. And just for reference, we're also going to use the beauty uh, lobe and hit denoise there. And that's going to cover our um, basic AOVs. So I'll just have a quick look at the settings here. I'm just going to do a fairly low quality render just at 64 samples at a pixel variance of 0.01 and my um, resolution is 960 by 540. Now make sure that you have saved your scene and set the project. If you don't do that you won't be able to do the next step which is batch rendering. Um, if you want to know more about batch rendering, I've got a previous tutorial which covers it. So we're just going to breeze through this very quickly um, and select batch render. Okay, so if your batch render is complete, you should find your renders under the under your project folder under the images uh, file. So uh, that'll be the most recent one. So that one there, and then we've got a bunch of um, AOVs, and I've also got CryptoMat which I glossed over. Um, crypto mats can be added by going to features, right clicking on the sample um, filters and add crypto mat. I've got a separate tutorial for crypto, net, crypto mats as well if you want to check that out for more information. So here in Nuke we're going to composite these together. I'm just going to grab all of them and drag them in like that which just makes it a bit quicker. And what we want to find are our passes uh, filtered, which is this file here. Um, this one here is the non-denoised ones, um, so they will look like 
like that. So as you can see, kind of noisy in the background there. Now this, this is a pretty low sample rate, so it's not gonna be particularly uh, clean anyway, but you know, that's a sort of good reference. So what we're gonna do, so I'm just gonna limit that to one tab, and I'm gonna break out all the um, different passes that we have in this file here. So we're just gonna hit tab and create a shuffle node, and I'm just gonna make a couple of copies of that and connect them all into there. And then we're gonna grab on the right hand side uh, under your properties, we're gonna select the direct diffuse for the first one, uh, direct specular for the second one, um, indirect diffuse for the third, and indirect specular for the fourth. So now if I had uh, one on the first one, you see it's a direct specular, and then we've got the direct diffuse, indirect specular, uh, indirect, uh, sorry, indirect diffuse. Now, we need to combine all these together to uh, create our beauty, uh, which looks like this. Um, as you can see, this is the denoised version of the um, beauty because it, it doesn't know how to de um, denoise the background uh, because it's on an emissive channel. Um, it's better that we've done that as a separate AOV there. So let's combine these. We're gonna create a plus when you're creating AOVs. Uh, combining them is always plus uh, mathematics. Um, if you use multiples, um, multipliers or anything like that, you're gonna run into trouble uh, in most cases. So I'm just gonna use the B pipe to, it doesn't really matter, but um, just to keep things consistent, I'm just gonna use the B pipe to our shuffle nodes. And basically what's happening here is the first one is um, running out into this plus, and that's adding to the second, to the third, and now to the fourth. So you can see those build up as I go through and put those to the viewer. So now you can see there that we've got a nice combined um, collection of passes. We don't have our emissive um, filtered pass yet, so we're just gonna do the same thing with that. It's just a shuffle channel. Change that to emissive. Create a plus and run that in there. And then we get that in the background. All right, so um, it does appear like it hasn't actually denoised it, but um, what's actually happening is because this um, environment light um, has got a bokeh effect happening in the camera, which I rendered out, um, it's not denoising it perfectly. So if you're using in-camera um, defocusing or depth of field, uh, what you're going to run into possibly is this sort of thing. And also at a low sample rate, you're not going to get a great result. So this is the denoise version. You can actually see it working in some of the areas there. Um, but yeah, obviously not perfect, but still workable for what we're doing. So now you can see them all combined there together. And we'll compare that to the, um, this is the non-denoised render layer. And this is the denoised render layer. So, so yeah. So as you can see, essentially identical between the uh, denoised and non-denoised beauty layer, uh, except for the obviously the noise not being identical. Now with this, um, the reason you wanna do this, and you probably already know, but the reason you wanna do this is for control. So we have got a um, pretty harsh light coming in from the left-hand side of our subject. So what we could do is turn that down so what we'll just move some stuff out of the way so I've got a bit of space now I've got that crypto mat which is here I'm just going to create a crypto mat node and what I'm going to do is select um, we'll just select the whole lot of the robot um, you can also use <clears throat> object IDs to do this, um, but crypto mats I just find are a little bit more versatile and uh, a lot less set up. So create a bit more space. This is an incredibly messy comp, by the way, I'm just doing this for um, the sake of expediency. 
Okay, so what we've got here is our, um, our direct specular and we've got our robot selected. So what we can do is create a grade node and say we wanted to um, reduce the gain of the specularity. Um, you can make it, you know, increase the white point if you wanted to. Um, you could sort of clamp it with the black point. Uh, but what we'll do is just work with the gain. So we're just going to reduce the gain of it um, to bring it back a little bit. So we've got a grade happening, but it's happening to everything at the moment. So what we want to do is run the mask out to the crypto mat, and it's just going to grade our um, robot. So now when we select the plus, We'll go back to that grade. Actually, we'll just select the final there and we'll go back to this grade. Now we can just control the specularity on the robot or to make this a bit more obvious, we can just say do it on his face. Because maybe we're happy with the specularity everywhere else, but we're finding that it's just a bit too hot on its face. So we can t bring it down a little bit there. So it was, by now you can obviously tell how powerful this is because if you don't get something 100% perfect in your render, this allows you the option to go through and touch things up after the fact. And there's obviously another number of ways you can affect your renders after you've done a complete render uh, in a composite, but using AOVs will allow you to do even more. Now finally, earlier I talked about the um, AOVs that are built into the beauty layer. They will only come with your beauty variants. So if we hit shuffle out of the beauty variants, and we just shuffle out Albedo, for example, you can see we get the Albedo channel. Um, the ones obviously you're going to work with are the diffuse, mainly obviously, um, and uh, da, da, da. normals possibly though I don't know why the normals didn't work there, and specular. Um, but like I said, this will only work, um, this will only give you the non-denoised versions of your render. And I would say almost 100% of the time you're going to be do some being, uh, you're going to be doing some amount of denoising uh, in your render. So generally you're going to want to create your own AOVs and it'll also allow you to control specific things which may not be in the beauty, um, like subsurface scattering or something like that. Um, and yeah, so that is pretty much everything for this tutorial. If you found the tutorial useful, make sure you click the like button, uh, leave any questions and comments below. And if you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed as I try to bring out tutorials again once a week now that I've got a little bit more time coming up in a few weeks. Um, so I've got a bit of a backlog recorded and ready to be released on YouTube every week. So make sure you're checking back. And I will see you in the next tutorial. Thank you very much for watching and happy rendering.